Uh, good, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm a bit later today. We've had some internet issues where, where I'm living. Um, but today's topic is all about um, this statement. You know, my father never felt safe, like a safe space or a safe person for me. He wasn't the secure presence I needed. And if you relate to this, uh, then that's what this video is going to explore uh, in a bit more depth. You know, with a narcissistic father, um, the main thing to understand is that you were an object. Now, you see, objects are, it's almost like a, an appliance. So a narcissistic father has a wife and children, and for them, these people are appliances. So, for example, you, you buy a toaster, you buy a microwave, you buy a television. The family of the narcissistic father are all objects, and each one of them has their role or their function to fulfill. So this gives us a bit of an insight into what it's like being the child of a narcissistic father. You're aware that your father doesn't really have any interest in you as a person. So, for example, you know, you wouldn't be interested in an appliance needs unless it was to ensure that that appliance could meet your needs or fulfill its function. So you wouldn't want to teach an appliance skills or morals or, you know, uh, treat it with empathy and try to understand it and, you know, be inquisitive about it. No, <laughs> that, that's, that's not part of the picture here. Uh, with a narcissistic father, it's about, okay, what do I need to give this object in order for it to do what I need it to do? Um, and that's it. Anything more is is uh, a, a burden, um, annoyance, um, you know, if, if the appliance has an, op an opinion um, or, a, you know, it has, in, has needs beyond just its functioning, that's just not on, um, you know, that's, that's, that's going to be dismissed. Um, that's, that's how the narcissistic father views their children. Um, and, and this, this can be communicated to the children in, in, in very, um, very sort of rejecting ways. You know, the, the child is aware that it's a bit um, uncertain about its father, that, that they're, they feel almost that any attempt to ask for something or um, to share an opinion is dangerous. Uh, it's dangerous to share who you are because, you know, we are what we feel, uh, how we experience the world. These are, these are, th these are what make each of us unique is our interpretation and our experience of life um, and our likes and our dislikes, which may not be the same as another person's. But for the narcissistic father, they, they're really not interested in that. And they, they, they keep their children from sharing themselves, really, their opinions and their needs out of fear that this will be an annoyance. Um, that it might result in the father rejecting the child. And this often happens. These narcissistic fathers can be so dismissive. They can be, they can almost be ridiculing sometimes of um, opinions or ideas. Uh, they can, you know, uh, be very critical, um, be very controlling. You know, there's this kind of, underlying control sometimes sometimes it's it's not only underlying sometimes it can be very obvious you know some of these fathers can rage and you know instill fear um the narcissistic father does rule with fear 
It's either overt fear or there's an underlying fear. Now, the problem here is, you know, children need their parents to be empathetic towards them. That's when a child feels safe. A child feels unsafe when it knows its parent is not being in empathetic towards it. In other words, when the parent is being self-focused or selfish. The child can pick up on the self-centeredness of the parent and it makes the child feel extremely uncertain. It makes the child unable to really trust their parent and as a result try to somehow meet the self-centered needs of the parent in order to try to gain some semblance of safety. Um, but of course, you know, this leaves the child feeling completely unknown, uh, completely unseen, and ultimately unloved, used. And the thing about a narcissistic father is that you are used. You are used and discarded. And there are clear times when you will feel that being discarded sense. And it's very painful. It's very painful because, you know, for boys and girls, daughters and sons, the relationship with the father is so pivotal. The father represents the relationship with the outside world. The mother represents the relationship with the inner world. Um, and so when you have a narcissistic father, the world is unsafe to you. And there can be a real struggle um, for, for adults later on um, in that they, they don't feel safe um, and, and they can you know, often turn to unhelpful things, unhelpful ways of being and addictions in order to try to cope with that sense of not feeling safe. You know, a child needs to know that its dad has got its back, uh, that the father is proud um, and that the father is really wanting to be a father, uh, you know, wanting to, to step in and really take on the role. Uh, but with a narcissistic father, that's completely absent. They're not interested in being a father. They quite like, you know, being able to um, be given the title, much like the narcissistic mother in that sense. Uh, but they're not uh, interested in uh, giving any more than the basics. Um, and it's your role as a child of a narcissistic father uh, to just stay small, have little needs, um, and be compliant to function, to function. Um, that's all that's required, just like an appliance. So, you know, what do we do about this? You know, when you grow up with a narcissistic father who is not interested in who you are or how you feel or your opinions, we can, we can find that we're often unable to connect with, with what we like and what our opinions are. We're afraid to have them almost sometimes. Um, so some of the work in healing is about beginning to give yourself some space to say, well, what do I think? Um, you know, what, what do I, what do I believe? Um, and to show yourself that inquisitiveness that you never got. It's also about valuing your own feelings and your own experience, you know, and, and people often find you journaling and writing their thoughts down and things like that can be really helpful. Um, but ultimately, I think, you know, we really need to do some work on, on the damage that these fathers do, particularly on the subconscious, you know, these beliefs that will have, you will have taken on about yourself. Uh, that in order to be safe, you need to be small um, and that, you know, you have no value other in 
than in terms of what you you can do or be uh these need to be you need to be released from them um and that's the work i do with clients you know it's both uh on the cognitive and the subconscious level and we do focus in on the father wound particularly because it is a wound and it does need healing and if it's not if we, if we don't you know take hold of this and and bring 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 some healing uh, to this 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 pain um it will express itself uh, in other areas of our lives um physically um in relationships we'll, we'll find we're attracting exactly the same type of people who do not value you but they value what you can do so if you'd like to work with me please do book in i'll put my calendar link at the end of this video and uh, if you're watching on youtube please like share and subscribe and leave any comments thank you to all those who've been commenting it's really um so helpful for all of us to read your comments um and i will be doing another video tomorrow on the impact of a narcissistic father take care everybody good evening <laughs>